Hello, welcome to 100 Important Orthopedic MCQ. Here we are only discussing important and most repeated MCQs in the orthopedics. Now let's move to question number 1. Active shoulder movement are best examined. Option A from the left side of the patient. Option B from the right side of the patient. Option C from the both side of the patient. Option D from the behind the patient. And the answer is... Option D behind the patient. Now let's move to question number 2. A full thickness tear of the rotator cuff of the shoulder. Option A. Always follow long period of chronic tendonitis. Option B. Always follow jerking injury of the shoulder. Option C. There is sudden pain and the patient is unable to abduct the arm. Option D. There is sudden pain and the patient is able to abduct the arm. And the answer is... Option Z, there is sudden pain and the patient is unable to update the arm. Now let's move to question number 3. Functionally, the thumb is Option A, a 20% of the hand Option B, a 25% of the hand Option C, a 30% of the hand Option D, a 40% of the hand And the answer is Option D, a 40% of the hand Now let's move to question number 4. Barlow sign is related to diagnosis of option A, telepus ichnus pannus, option B, congenital dislocation of the hip, option C, ulnar nerve pannusy, option D, genovarum. And the answer is option B, congenital dislocation of the hip. Now let's move to question number 5. The early sign of compartment syndrome is option A, severe pain, option B, parastasia, option C, pallor, option D, paralysis. And the answer is Option A Severe Pain. Now let's move to question number 6. The most reliable test for anterior cruciate ligament injury is Option A Anterior Droyer's Test, Option B Posterior Droyer's Test, Option C Lechman's Test, Option D Pivot Shift Test. And the answer is Option C Lechman's Test. Now let's move to question number 7. Grade 4 muscle power is Option A. Normal power Option B. Movement against resistance Option C. Movement against the gravity Option D. Movement with gravity eliminated And the answer is Option B. Movement against the resistance Now let's move to question number 8. Car test 4. Option A. Dorsal introsche Option B. Palmar introsche Option C. Lambricket Option D. Thinner muscle and the answer is Option B. Palmar Introshai Now let's move to question number 9 Deltoid muscle supplied by Option A. C3, C4 Option B. C4, C5 Option C. C5, C6 Option D. C6, C7 And the answer is Option C. C5, C6 Now let's move to question number 10 The most common cause of osteomyelitis in adult is Option A. Acute hematogenesis osteomyelitis Option B. Post-operative osteomyelitis Option C. Subacute osteomyelitis Option D. Post-traumatic osteomyelitis And the answer is Option D. Post-traumatic osteomyelitis Now let's move to question number 11. Synovial fluid examination shows rheumatoid shape crystals in Option A. Rheumatoid arthritis Option B. Osteoarthritis Option C. Gout Option D. Pseudogout And the answer is Option D. Pseudogout Now let's move to question number 12. Pseudogout characterized by Option A. Affect large joints Option B. Cause severe pain Option C. Affect small joints Option D. There is no joint swelling And the answer is Option A affects large joints. Now let's move to question number 13. Springle shoulder deformity. Option A. The patient has short neck. Option B. There is failure of the vertebral segmentation. Option C. Associated vertebral anomaly is rare. Option D. The scapula is small and abnormality high. And the answer is Option D. The scapula is small and the abnormality high. Now let's move to question number 14. Wrist flexors supplied by Option A, C3, C4 Option B, C4, C5 Option C, C5, C6 Option D, C7, C8 And the answer is 
ऑप्शन डी सी सेवन सी एट नाउ लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन रेडियो अल्ना साइनोसिस इज ऑप्शन ए असोसिएटेड विथ एंडियर डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द रेडियल हेड ऑप्शन बी असोसिएट विथ मीडियल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द रेडियल हेड ऑप्शन सी देर इज कंप्लीट लॉस ऑफ प्रोनेशन एंड सुपरनेशन ऑप्शन डी देर इज सम डिग्री ऑफ प्रोनेशन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी देर इज कंप्लीट लॉस ऑफ प्रोनेशन एंड सुपरनेशन नाउ लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन A person is able to abduct his arm internally rotated place the back of the hand on the lumbosacral joint but is not able to lift it from the back what is the etiology option a subscapularis tendon dear option b teres major tendon dear option c long head of biceps tendon dear option d acromioclavicular joint dislocation and the answer is option a subscapularis tendon dear Now let's move to question number 17. Spastic flexion deformity of the knee in cerebral palsy may be revealed only when option A the hip is flexed to 20 degree option B the hip is flexed to 40 degree option C the hip is flexed to 50 degree option D the hip is flexed to 90 degree and the answer is option D the hip is flexed to 90 degree. Now let's move to question number 18. In the following type of fractures of long bones, crepitus can be elicited only in option A, impacted fractures; option B, subperiosteal cracks; option C, green stick fracture; option D, spinal and oblique fractures. And the answer is option D, spiral and oblique fractures. Now let's move to question number nineteen. Wing new scapula option A occurs in latissimus dorsi paralis. Option B demonstrated by the patient pushing forward against the wall. Option C results from the injury of the long thoracic nerve. Option D it usually recurs spontaneously, though this may take weeks or longer. And the answer is option B demonstrated by the patient pushing forward against the wall. Now let's move to question number twenty. Very high lesion of the radial nerve injury. Option A may caused by fracture of the humerus or after prolonged torniquet pressure. Option B are usually due to fracture or dislocation at the elbow. Option C cannot extend the metacarpopharyngeal joints of the hand. There is an obvious. Option D there is a wrist drop. The triceps paralyzed and the triceps reflex is absent. And answer is Option D there is wrist drop the triceps paralyzed and the triceps reflex is absent the anterior cruciate ligament stability option A the sac sign is sensitive test option B anterior dorsalis test is sensitive option C posterior dorsalis sign is sensitive option D lechment test is sensitive and the answer is option D lechment test is sensitive Now let's move to question number 22. Gallows traction is used for option A shaft of the femur, option B neck of the femur, option C shaft of tibia, option D tibial tuberosity and answer is option A shaft of the femur. Now let's move to question number 23. An upper shoulder pain syndrome results from option A tendonitis, option B glenohumeral arthritis. Option C suprascapular nerve entrapment option D cardiac ischemia and the answer is option D cardiac ischemia now let's move to question number 24 chronic shoulder tendonitis option A pain and slight stiffness would not restrict the simple activities option B pain persists and not affected by the activities option C the patient usually aged between 20 to 30 Option D characteristically pain is worse at the night and the answer is Option D characteristically pain is worse at the night Now let's move to question number 25 a new bone present with inverted foot and the dorsum of the foot cannot touch the anterior tibia the most probable diagnosis is option A congenital vertical varus option B arthrogryposis multiplexa option C CTEV option D flat foot and the answer is 
option a contains the vertical talus now let's move to question number 26 tennis elbow characterized by option a localized tenderness at or just below the lateral epicondyle option b pain radiate widely option c damage to the bones option d damage to soft tissue attachment around the elbow and the answer is option a localized tenderness at or just below the lateral epicondyle now let's move to question number 27 isolator anterior inferior nerve lesion option a are extremely common option b the signs of similar to those of high median injury option c usually cause in brachial neuritis option e there is no sensory loss and the answer is option d there is no sensory loss now let's move to question number 28 the superficial peroneal nerve option a innervating the tibialis anterior muscle option b innervating the extensor digitorum longus option c innervating extensor halus longus option d descend along the fibula and the answer is option d descend along the fibula now let's move to question number 29 the most common site of cervical spondylosis is option a c2 c3 and c3 c4 option b c3 c4 and c4 c5 option c c4 c5 and c5 c6 and option d c5 c6 and c6 c7 and the answer is option d c5 c6 and c6 c7 now let's move to question number 30 pulled elbow option a is a subluxation of the orbital ligament which slips up the over the head of the radius option b a child age 5 to 8 years old with a painful and dragging up option c the forearm held in supination and extension and any attempt to flex is restricted option d the x-ray shows subluxation of radial head and the answer is option a is a subluxation of orbital ligament which slips up over the head of the radius now let's move to question number 31 the cruciate ligaments provide option a anterior posterior stability option b rotator stability option c both anterior posterior and rotator stability option d mainly resist excessive valgus angulation and the answer is option c both anterior posterior and rotator stability now let's move to question number 32 the commonest cause of pain around the shoulder is option a a disorder of the rotator cuff option b glenohumeral arthritis option c nerve lesion option d subluxation and the answer is option a a disorder of the rotator cuff now let's move to question number 33 frozen shoulder option a is a well defined disorder characterized by the progressive painless stiffness of the shoulder option b stiffness become complete followed by the pain option c is usually resolved spontaneously after about 18 months option d the condition not associated with diabetes and answer is option c is usually resolved spontaneously after about 18 months now let's move to question number 34 indication of shoulder arthroplasty is option a osteoarthritis of acromioclavicular joint option b early rheumatoid arthritis option c fracture dislocation of the proximal humerus option d severe arthritis with cuff arthroplasty and the answer is option d severe arthritis with cuff arthroplasty Now let's move to question number 35. The commonest complication for shoulder arthroplasty is option A infection, option B loosening of the component, option C implant failure, option D periprosthetic fracture and the answer is option B loosening of the components. Now let's move to question number 36. Post traumatic unreduced dislocation of the red of the radius. option a surgical treatment would not improve the function option c is usually associated with cubitus varus option c may follow unreduced or ortengia fracture option d is usually bilateral and the answer is 
ऑप्शन जी मे फोर ऑफ हंड्रेड यूज और वोटेंगिया फ्रैक्चर नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी सेवन गोट ऑफ द एल्बो रीजन ऑप्शन ए अफेक्ट अल नो ह्यूमरल जॉइंट ऑप्शन बी अफेक्ट रेडियो ह्यूमरल जॉइंट ऑप्शन जी द ओलिक्रोन बर्सा इज द फेवरेट साइट ऑप्शन डी अफेक्ट द कॉमन एक्सटेंस ऑफ ओरिजिन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी द ओलिक्रोन बर्सा इज द फेवरेट साइट नो लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी एट रिकरेंट एलबो इनस्टेबिलिटी कॉमनली असोसिएटेड विथ ऑप्शन ए मसिल वीकनेस ऑप्शन बी पॉस्टीर कैप्सुलर इंजुरी ऑप्शन सी लैटल कोलाटर लिगमेंट इंजुरी ऑप्शन डी फ्रैक्चर ऑफ ओलिक्रोन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी लैटल कोलाटर लिगमेंट इंजुरी इज नो लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी नाइन द नॉर्मल रेडियल डिविएशन इज अबाउट ऑप्शन डी फाइव डिग्री ऑप्शन बी फिफ्टीन डिग्री ऑप्शन सी ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री ऑप्शन डी थर्टी फाइव डिग्री एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी फिफ्टीन डिग्री नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी कॉम्बो डाइस्टैली इज ऑप्शन ए कंजॉइंट डिजिट ऑप्शन बी फेलियर ऑफ द एम्ब्रोलॉजिकल सेपरेशन ऑप्शन सी ट्रू लेफ्ट हैंड ऑप्शन डी ए बेंट फिंगर एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी ए बेन फिंगर स्प्रेन इज ऑप्शन ए लिगमेंट इयर ऑप्शन बी एनी पेनफुल वैंजिंग और ट्विस्टिंग और पुलिंग मूवमेंट ऑफ द जॉइंट ऑप्शन सी असोसिएट विथ आर्टिकुलर कार्टलेज डैमेज ऑप्शन डी कंप्रेशन ऑफ द आर्टिकुलर सर्फर्स एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी एनी पेनफुल वैंजिंग मूवमेंट ऑफ द जॉइंट नाउ लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी टू A positive anterior dorsal test is diagnostic of option A ACL, option B MCL, option C LCL, option D PCL, and the answer is option A ACL. Now let's move to question number forty-three. In combined median and ulnar nerve injury, option A the thumb is in the palm, option B the thumb is flexed, option C there is glowing of the thumb, option D the thumb lies at the side of the hand, and the answer is. Option D the thumb lies at the side of the hand. Now let's move to question number 44. The most common finger affected by the trigger finger is option A little finger, option B ring finger, option C middle finger, option D thumb and the answer is option D thumb. Now let's move to question number 45. The post operative care of the total hip arthroplasty The length of the inpatient stay reduced to 14 to 16 days in most hospitals. Option B, full weight bearing without support will take about 6 to 8 weeks at the patient's own pace. Option C, car driving allowed 14 days. Option D, patient will have negotiated stays independently 2 months. And the answer is Option B, full weight bearing without support will usually take 6 to 8 weeks at the patient's own pace. Now let's move to question number forty-six. The most unstable of the carpal bone is option A, PC four; option B, lunate; option C, hematite; option D, scaphoid. And the answer is option D, scaphoid. Now let's move to question number forty-seven. What is the most common mode of failure of lateral ulnar collateral ligament associated with the elbow dislocation? Option A, ligament avulsion of the humeral origin. Option B, ligament avulsion of the Ulnar insertion. Option C, bony avulsion of the humeral origin. Option D, bony avulsion of the ulnar insertion. And the answer is option A, ligament avulsion of the humeral origin. Now let's move to question number forty-eight. The cardinal feature of the rheumatoid hand is option A, a reciprocal ulnar deviation of the fingers. Option B combination of instability and erosive tendonovitis eventually leads to the tendon rupture. Option C the erosion of the distal radio ulnar joint. Option D the erosion of the radio carpal joint and intercarpal joints. And the answer is Option A a reciprocal ulnar deviation of the fingers. Now let's move to question number 49. The X-ray changes in rheumatoid arthritis is option A periarticular osteoporosis 
ऑप्शन बी डिमिनेशन ऑफ द जॉइंट स्पेस ऑप्शन सी सॉफ्ट टिश्यू स्वेलिंग ऑप्शन डी बॉडी इरोशन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी सॉफ्ट टिश्यू स्वेलिंग नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी द डिजिटल रेडियल एपिफाइसिस अपीयर्स एट द एज ऑफ ऑप्शन ए फर्स्ट ईयर ऑप्शन बी सेकेंड ईयर ऑप्शन सी फोर्थ ईयर ऑप्शन डी सिक्स ईयर एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी सेकेंड ईयर नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी वन विद द रिस फ्लेक्स द थम फोर्स नॉर्मली इन ऑप्शन ए फ्लेक्शन ऑप्शन बी सुपरनेशन ऑप्शन सी प्रोनेशन ऑप्शन डी एक्सटेंशन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी एक्सटेंशन नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी टू इंटेंसिक मसल ऑफ हैंड ऑप्शन एक्सटेंडेड ऑफ द एम सी पी एंड फ्लेक्स आई पी जॉइंट ऑप्शन बी एक्सटेंडेड ऑफ द एम सी पी एंड एक्सटेंडेड आई पी जॉइंट ऑप्शन सी फ्लेक्सड ऑफ द एम सी पी एंड एक्सटेंडेड आई पी जॉइंट ऑप्शन डी फ्लेक्सड ऑफ द एम सी पी एंड फ्लेक्सड आई पी जॉइंट एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन जी फ्लेक्सड ऑफ द एम सी पी एंड एक्सटेंडेड आई पी जॉइंट नाउ लेट्स मोर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर Osteo arthritis in hand affect mostly the option D proximal interferential joint option D distal interferential joint option C metacarpophalangeal joint option C carpometacarpal joints and the answer is option B distal interferential joints now let's move to question number 54 pain on the lateral rotation of the tibia on the femur indicate damage to which of the following structures option D anterior cruciate ligament Option B posterior cruciate ligament option C lateral meniscus option D medial meniscus and the answer is option C lateral meniscus now let's move to question number 55 in structural scoliosis option A a right thoracic curvature are the commonest option B left thoracic curvature is the commonest option C right lumbar curvature is the commonest option D left lumbar curvature is commonest and the answer is Option A, right thoracic curvature is commonest. Now let's move to question number fifty-six. The disc space collapse in typical. Option A, traumatic compression. Option B, infection. Option C, multiple myeloma. Option D, metastatic disease. And the answer is option B, infection. Now let's move to question number fifty-seven. Root canal stenosis results from option A. degenerative changes of the disc option b osteoarthritis of the facet joint option c a new bone formation may narrow the lateral recess of the spinal canal and inevitable foramen option d bulging of the disc annulus fibrosis and the answer is option c new bone formation may narrow the lateral recess of the spinal canal and inevitable foramen now let's move to question number 58 Acute disc prolapse option A is uncommon in young adults. Option B is rare in old age. Option C present at sciatica only. Option D may cause muscle weakness and wasting. And the answer is Option D may cause muscle weakness and wasting. Now let's move to question number fifty-nine. The characteristic feature of the segmental instability of the lumbar spine is. Option A, intervertebral disc degeneration. Option B, mainly flattened the disc peak. Option C, marginal osteophyte. Option D, appearance of the traction spur. And the answer is option D, the appearance of the traction spur. Now let's move to question number sixty. The changes of the osteoarthritis of the hip are most marked. Option A, in margin of the articular surface. Option B, the top of the joint. Option C in the inferior medial aspect of the joint. Option D in the medial aspect of the joint. And the answer is option B, the top of the joint. The majority of patients presenting with shock following a major injury will be suffering from option A, hypovolemic shock. Option B, septic shock. Option C, neurogenic shock. Option D, anaphylactic shock. And the answer is. Option A, hypovolemic shock. Now let's move to question number sixty-two. Isolated tear of MCL. Option A, the knee is unstable in full extension. Option B, usually heal well enough to permit near normal function. Option C, operative repair is necessary. Option D, arthroscopy should be attempted. 
and the answer is option b usually heal well enough to permit near normal function now let's move to question number 63 the incidence of non union in clavicle is higher in option a displaced middle third of the fracture option b commuted middle third fracture option c lateral part fracture option d medial part of the fracture and the answer is option c lateral part of the fracture now let's move to question number 64 locking of the knee that is the sudden inability to extend the knee fully suggest option a anterior horn tear option b posterior horn tear option c horizontal tear option d bucket handle tear and the answer is option d bucket handle tear now let's move to question number 65 operative treatment of meniscus injury option a indicated if the joint is locked option b indicated if the symptom are acute option c tear close to periphery treated by meniscectomy option d total meniscectomy though to cause more instability and so predisposed to late secondary osteoarthritis and the answer is option d total meniscectomy though to cause more instability and so predisposed to late secondary osteoarthritis now let's move to question number 66 the indication of urgent surgical treatment in recurrent dislocation of patella option a tear of the medial capsule option b multiple dislocation in knee flexion option c presence of large displaced osteochondral fracture option d recurrent dislocation of patella with severe pain and the answer is Option C presence of large displaced osteochondral fracture Now let's move to question number 67 The common knee joint disorders that cause anterior knee pain option A patellar instability option B patellofemoral overload option C patellar ligament strain option D plica syndrome and the answer is Option C patellar ligament strain Now let's move to question number 68 Forward subluxation of lateral tibial condyle is prevented by option A lateral collateral ligament option B posterior lateral capsule option C posterior cruciate ligament option D anterior cruciate ligament and answer is option D anterior cruciate ligament Now let's move to question number 69 backward subluxation of the tibia is prevented by option a the anterior cruciate ligament option b the posterior cruciate ligament option c the posterior cruciate ligament with the accurate ligament and the posterior oblique ligament option d anterior cruciate ligament and the medial collateral ligament and the answer is option c the posterior cruciate ligament with the accurate ligament and the posterior oblique ligament Now let's move to question number 70. Have a toe characterized by option A hyperextension of the MTP joint and flexion of both IP joint, option B acute flexion of the deformity of proximal IP joint only and hyperextension of MTP joint, option C flexion of distal IP joint and extension of proximal IP joint, option D the MTP joint is dislocated and the little toe sits on the dorsum of the metatarsal head. and answer is option b acute flexion deformity of proximal ip joint only and hyperextension of the mtp joint now let's move to course number 71 insufficiency fracture in diabetic foot should be treated option a by prolonged cast option b without immobilization option c by internal fixation option d by internal fixation with bond cement and the answer is option b without immobilization now let's move to question number 72 fracture of the pelvis option a can result in devastating retroperitoneal hemorrhage option b bleeding cannot be reduced by compressing the pelvis to appropriate the bleeding fracture sites option c compression to reduce hemorrhage cannot achieved manually with a towel or blanket Option D compression by external fixation of pelvis is useless and the answer is 
option D, combustion by external fixation of pelvis is useless. Now let's move to question number 73. The common nerve injury in Motangia fracture dislocation. Option A, median nerve. Option B, radial nerve. Option C, alnar nerve. Option D, posterior introsus nerve. And the answer is Option D, posterior introsus nerve. Now let's move to question number 74. The early sign of compartment in upper limb. Option A, pallor of fingers. Option B, painful dorsiflexion of fingers. Option C, anesthesia. Option D, pulselessness. And the answer is Option B, painful dorsiflexion of fingers. Now let's move to question number 75. Early treatment of myositis ossificans. Option A. Muscle stretching exercises. Option B. Splintage in the position of rest followed by active exercise. Option C. Splintage in position of function followed by active exercise. Option D. Manipulation under anesthesia followed by passive exercise. And the answer is. Option C. Splintage in position of function followed by active exercise. Now let's move to question number 76. Displaced lateral third fracture of clavicle. Option A. Are stable injuries. Option B. Have a lower than usual rate of non-union if treated non-operatively. Option C. Surgery to stabilize the fracture is rarely recommended. Option D. Operation for this fracture have a high complication rate. And answer is... Option D. Operation for this fracture have a high complication rate. Now let's move to question number 77. After lifting something heavy from ground, a patient complains of back pain, which is radiating to lateral leg and great toe of the lower limb. Most probable diagnosis would be Option A. L5-S1 disc product. Option B. L4-L5 disc prolapse. Option C. L3-L4 disc prolapse. Option D. L5 fracture. And the answer is Option B. L4-L5 disc prolapse. Now let's move to question number 78. The fat pad sign of the elbow. Option A is seen most clearly in the anterior posterior view. Option B seen in displaced supracondylar fracture. Option C is diagnostic of undisplaced supracondylar fracture. Option D arose suspicion undisplaced supracondylar fracture. And answer is Option D arose suspicion undisplaced supracondylar fracture. Now let's move to question number 79. The common cause of primary OA in hip is Option A. Avascular necrosis Option B. Subluxation of the hip Option C. Displacia of the hip Option D. Femoroastabular impingement And the answer is Option D. Femoroastabular impingement Now let's move to question number 80. Total hip arthroplasty for rheumatoid arthritis Option A. Relieve pain but not restore the usual range of movement. Option B. It advocated for old patient only. Option C. Fracture during the operation is rare. Option D. Adolescent with juvenile or rheumatoid arthritis may be treated by custom-made processes. And the answer is... Option D. Adolescent with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis may be treated by custom-made processes. Ischemia following supracondylar fracture suggested by Option A. Pain and reduced capillary return on pressing in the finger pulp Option B. Pain and blurred sensation Option C. Undue pain and pain on passive extension of the finger Option D. Pain and a tense and a tender fora And the answer is Option C. Undue pain and pain on passive extension of the fingers now let's move to question number 82. Night stick fracture is Option A is fracture of the radius hello. Option B fracture of radius with wrist subluxation. Option C direct fracture of the ulna hello. Option D fracture of the ulna proximal radio ulna subluxation. And answer is Option C direct fracture of the ulna hello. Now let's move to question number 83. Isolated fracture of the radius. Option A. Are prone to rotatory displacement. Option B. To achieve the reduction in children, the forearm needs to be pronated for upper third fractures. 
option Z to achieve rotation in RDL, the forearm needs to be supinated for middle third fractures. Option D to achieve reduction in chiltrans, the forearm needs to be supinated for lower third fractures. And answer is Option A are prone to rotatory displacement. Now let's move to question number 84. Cody's fracture splinted after reduction in Option A in 5 degree flexion and 5 degree ardna deviation. Option B in 10 degree flexion and 10 degree ardna deviation. Option C in 15 degree flexion and 15 degree ardna deviation. Option D in 20 degree flexion and 20 degree ardna deviation. And answer is Option D in 20 degree flexion and 20 degree ardna deviation. Now let's move to question number 85. The commonest wrist injury is Option A fracture of a scaphoid. Option B lunate dislocation. Option C sprain of the capsule and ligaments. Option D injury of triangular fibrocartilage complex. And answer is Option C sprain of the capsule and ligaments. Now let's move to question number 86. A mallet finger. Option A is best treated with a splint for 8 weeks. Option B surgery is good alternative. Option C surgery carries a low rate and wound failure. Option D metal work problem is also rare. And answer is Option A is best treated with splint for 8 weeks. And now let's move to question number 87. Avulsion of the flexor tendon of the fingers. Option A caused by direct trauma. Option B caused by sudden hyperextension of the distal joint. Option C the little finger is most commonly affected. Option D the flexor disjoint superficial tendon is avulsed. And answer is Option B caused by sudden hyperextension of the distal joint. Now let's move to question number 88. The complete rupture of the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. Option A is very common. Option B only the ligament proper is torn. Option C the thumb is unstable in flexion only. Option D the thumb is unstable in all positions. And the answer is Option D the thumb is unstable in all position. Now let's move to question number 89. The commonest cause of stiffness in hand injury is Option A the presence of fractures. Option B tendon injury. Option C failure to use splintage in safety position. Option D presence of edema. And the answer is Option C failure of the use of splintage in safety position. Now let's move to question number 90. MRI is method of choice for Option A showing structural damage to the individual vertebra. Option B showing displacement of bone fragments into the vertebral canal. Option C displacing the intervertebral disc, ligamentum favor, and neural stretches. Option D provides information on dimensions of the spinal canal. And answer is Option C displacing the intervertebral disc, ligamentum favum, and neural stretches. Now let's move to question number 91. A patient met with a road traffic accident with injury to left knee. Dial test was positive. What could be the cause? Option A. Medial collateral ligament injury. Option B. Posterior lateral corner injury. Option C. Lateral meniscus tear. Option D. Medial meniscus injury. And the answer is Option B. Posterior lateral corner injury. Now let's move to question number 92. The primary stabilizer for valgus stress at 30 degree of flexion is Option A, the MCL. Option B, the LCL. Option C, the PCL. Option D, the ACL. And the answer is Option A, the MCL. Now let's move to question number 93. Locking is a feature of chronic. Option A, anterior cruciate ligament injury. Option B, posterior cruciate ligament injury. Option C, anterior median instability. Option D, meniscal tear. And the answer is Option D, meniscal tear. Now let's move to question number 94. The reliable method of diagnosing central meniscus injury. Option A, pivot shift test. Option B, reverse pivot test. 
option C a please combustion test option D MRI and the answer is option D MRI now let's move to question number 95 during running and jumping the load transmitted through the angle and foot option E 2 times body weight option B 4 times the body weight option C 6 times the body weight option D 10 times the body weight and the answer is option D 10 times the body weight now let's move to question number 96 in plantar flexion of ankle the vulnerable ligament for the injury is Option A, the posterior talofibular ligament. Option B, the calcaneofibular ligament. Option C, the anterior talofibular ligament. Option D, talocalcaneal ligament. And the answer is Option C, the anterior talofibular ligament. Now let's move to question number 97. The first ligament injured in twisted angle is Option A, the talocalcaneal ligament. Option B, the anterior talofibular ligament. Option C, the posterior talofibular ligament. Option D, calcaneofibular ligament. And answer is Option B, the anterior talofibular ligament. Now let's move to question number 98. The lateral ligament injuries of the angle may mimic. Option A, displaced fracture of the fibula. Option B, displaced fracture of the tarsal bones. Option C, the injury of distal tibiofibular joint. Option D, the injuries of the tibialis posterior tendon sheet. And the answer is e. Option C, the injury of distal tibiofibular joint. Now let's move to question number 99. Big toe extension muscle supplied by Option A, L2. Option B, L3. Option C, L4. Option D, L5. And the answer is Option D L5. Now let's move to question number 100. The central cord syndrome is due to Option A, a fold on the flexed neck. Option B, hyperextension injury of the background of the herniated disc. Option C, a hyperextension injury in a patient with facet joint hypertrophy and thickened ligament of favor. Option D, an anterior spinal artery lesion. And the answer is Option C, a hyperextension injury in a patient with a facet joint hypertrophy and thickened ligament of favor. So that's the end of this series. We will be back with another topic soon. If you have any kind of doubt and need clarification for any of the above questions, do comment in the comment box. See you in the next session. Thank you and bye-bye.